Philip and Candace Watson are a married couple living in the picturesque city of Visalia, California. They've been together for 10 years and have their hands full with three children. My oldest son is Philip. He loves sports. He reminds me a lot of myself when I was younger. My youngest is my daughter, Nevaeh. She's very girly since she's the only girl. Caden's my second oldest. He, uh, you know, is really wild. And more than anything else, Caden loves the outdoors. Caden loves playing with his trucks outside and digging up dirt, just getting as messy as possible. We call him our little dirt ball. But young Caden's favorite pastime is about to kick up more than a little dust. It's mid-January, and Caden has just returned from school when Candace notices something unusual. Caden put his backpack by the door, and he went and he laid down. Something was strange, because that never happened. Caden normally would go outside. I was thinking, OK, maybe he's coming down with the cold. But I wasn't thinking anything serious. So I let him sleep. A few hours later, Candace and Philip check up on their son. They notice that he is running a slight fever. But that's not all. I noticed that he had a little bit of a cough. <laughs> You could tell that it was kind of hurting his chest. Kind of put my ear up to his chest. I could hear his cough was just dry and like rattling. It was a horrible cough. <laughs> but I wasn't that worried. It is wintertime. People are getting cold. So Philip and Candace give Caden some cough medicine to help him get back to sleep. But the next day, the fever and the cough are still there. My whole thing was, let's give it some time to work. Let's see if it's going to suppress his cough. Let's see if he's going to get better. I was not agreeing. Deep down, I felt something was going on with Caden that I couldn't put my finger on. I wanted to take him to the doctor, because that's what I do. I always want to make sure my kids are good. But Philip put my mind at ease, like, everything's going to be OK. I was very hopeful that he was going to get better by using over-the-counter medicine. Candace and Philip agree to keep Caden on the medication. And to their delight, his condition starts to improve. He had been feeling a little bit better, so I took him with me to the grocery store. And we were going down the meat aisle, and Caden just vomits all over the ground. Was everywhere. And I'm like, OK, what's going on? So I stopped shopping, and I immediately took him home. The next day, Candace takes Caden to the doctor. There, he gets a full exam. The doctor checked him out, and he checked his breathing. He checked to see if he had a fever. And he said that it seems like it's the flu. I wasn't worried, because I know it takes a while for it to get out of your system. So he gave me some medication for it, and I brought him home. Back at the house, Candace gives Caden the flu medication. But when he doesn't rebound, Candace's motherly instincts tell her something else is going on. The doctor had prescribed medication that did not work, and I was ready for him to feel better. So. I took him in to see a new doctor, and I explained to him, Caden's been vomiting, he's been coughing, he has a fever. The doctor listened to his breathing. He said all the symptoms point to pneumonia. Pneumonia is a disease that causes the air sacs in the lungs to fill with fluid. This can lead to coughing, fever, and difficulty breathing. It is most often caused by either a viral or bacterial infection. I was bumped. I was like, OK, this, this has to be it. The doctor gave me some antibiotics. I was just ready for him to get medicated in the right way. For two days, Candace gives Caden the medication, but her son's symptoms only worsen. Then, in the middle of the night, 
Candace and Philip are woken by a strange sound. I could hear him wheezing from my bedroom. You can hear it from far distance. I mean, you could be three rooms away and you can hear that little <laughs> I was thinking something has to give. I was worried. And so I bring him into the room with us. I think that once Philip seen Caden like that, he realized too that something else was going on with our son. Candace and Philip rush Caden to the hospital. We get into the emergency room, and the doctor looks at his neck and is like, What's that on his neck? It's a large lump. I had never seen it before, it was huge. I went and tested, and it was hard. You know, it was hard like a rock. I was really scared at that point. Doctors perform an ultrasound on the lump on Caden's neck, and the results are stunning. The big golf ball size swelling on his neck was a lymph node. Lymph nodes are part of the immune system. They are located at various points in the body, including the neck. When they swell, it's often a sign that the body is fighting an infection. They were concerned that it could spread to other places of his body. I felt worried for our family, but we just put on a brave face for him and kept our emotions together for him. With the situation worsening, a team of specialists takes on Caden's case. They administered a blood test and uh, sent it off to the labs. I felt that we're finally going to get some results, whether we like them or not. Once the blood results are in, the doctor delivers the devastating news. The doctor told me and Candace that what Caden has is known as valley fever. I had never heard of valley fever before. Valley fever is an infection caused by a fungus called Coccidioides immatus. Inside Caden's body, the fungus attaches itself to the air sacs in his lungs, where they feed and grow, causing his wheezing, pneumonia, and vomiting. From there, the Coccidioides fungus moves into his bloodstream and spreads throughout his body, leading to Caden's swollen lymph nodes. We were like stunned, you know, stunned that all this is going on to our little boy. I just had to keep praying. That's all I could do. If the coccidioides immatus fungus goes untreated and infects the brain, it is almost always fatal. Six-year-old Caden Watson has just been diagnosed with the fungal disease, valley fever. In rare instances, if the fungus spreads across the body and into the brain, it can be highly lethal. Because Caden's infection is spreading fast, doctors put him on a powerful antifungal medication. The doctor said that we may have to give Caden more than we usually give normal children. I was worried. For a month, doctors keep Caden on the antifungal drugs. Then, things take a drastic turn for the worse. Suddenly, he is unable to breathe. The infection was compromising his airway. It was smaller than a straw. To stop Caden from suffocating, doctors put a mask over his face and pump helium and oxygen directly into his lungs. The doctor basically told us that your son could die. I broke down. I could not contain myself. I was probably at my lowest point, and I just started crying. You know, I hadn't cried in years. I was scared for his life. I felt that we could lose Caden. For three more weeks, Caden fights for his life as doctors work around the clock to keep him alive. This disease just really is an up and down battle. 
he used to have an appetite one day, and then the other day he doesn't have an appetite. I just refused to believe that my son would leave this earth. Then one morning, Philip notices something incredible. We started seeing signs of Caden um, starting to turn around. You could see it in his face. His glow was back. It was just great. The doctors, they were in awe of the fact that Caden had improved the way that he did. They would see Caden and they would say, oh my God, he's a miracle. Against incredible odds, Caden Watson overcomes the horrific valley fever infection. I was so excited to be home and sleep in my own bed. Caden came home. And we are so happy. We're overjoyed. But how did Caden contract valley fever? The coccidioides fungus typically lives in soil. But if the soil in which the fungus grows is disturbed, the fungus can become airborne and be carried for hundreds of miles. If a person inhales the fungal spores, then they can become infected. Philip and Candace realized just how this happened. We called him a dirt ball, because we didn't know any other kid that really played in the dirt that much. Being an innocent kid outside playing, and you know, no one's exempt. Some spores just lifted up and he inhaled it. After a total of six months of rehabilitation and treatment, Caden Watson is finally free of the fungus. Today, Caden is back to his happy, energetic self. Caden is 100% himself now. He goes out there, runs rips, gets in the sun, stays out there for a while. Doesn't show any signs of valley fever. But there's one new house rule. Caden is not allowed to play in the dirt anymore. But after what we've gone through, I know that our family can get through anything. The Coccidioides imitus fungus is commonly found in southern Arizona, New Mexico, and California. But recent research suggests it's spreading further north, and it's even been found as far north as Washington State. The best way to avoid contracting valley fever is to avoid dust storms and dusty areas when in regions where the fungus is endemic.